I got a great question yesterday over on Discord. If you want to check out our Discord server, please do so. But anyway, user Sierra Tingshen, I hope I'm saying that right, Sierra Tingshen, who's also a, uh, a patron, so thank you very much, submits this question. Is there a Professor Craig recommended reading order for Tolkien's Legendarium? I'm almost finished with the Silmarillion and wondering what to read next. Thanks. Well, you're welcome, Sierra, and I hope this video helps you out, and I hope it helps out a lot of other people too. Let's talk about what you should read after you're finished with the main trio. We've got The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion. Now, the order in which you read those major three is gonna be largely up to you. In fact, I don't much care. Some people would say that you shouldn't start with the Silmarillion. I kind of think that it's okay for some readers and you can do it. I argue that you can actually start with the Silmarillion even before you read the Lord of the Rings. But anyway, once you've read all those, where do you go from there? Well, there are two major paths you can go down. The first one would be if you want to read more stuff by Tolkien. Now, when it comes to stuff that was actually published in his lifetime, this is the bulk of it. When we're talking about the Middle Earth stuff, right? But if you want to read more stuff by him, there are a few options that you've got. If you want to get outside of Middle Earth for just a little while, can't say I blame you, there's a lot to take in there, then you can go check out some of the other stuff like Farmer Giles of Ham or Smith of Wooden Major or uh, Leaf by Niggle, one of my favorite things that he ever wrote. You can find all that sort of thing, uh, his other fiction, in these little collections. You can find them all over the place. Or you can read some of the essays and lectures that he wrote on fairy stories is a fantastic one. You can find it a lot of places, but I've got it here in The Monsters and the Critics. So you've got a little options like that, smaller, shorter stories that he wrote that are charming and delightful and, uh, and sometimes profound as well. If you wanna stick with the Middle Earth stuff, then after you finish the Silmarillion, next stop should be Unfinished Tales. This is a book that was also edited by Christopher Tolkien, but in this case, it is not structured in the same way as the Silmarillion. This one is more of an effort to peek behind the curtains a little bit. So Christopher Tolkien found all of these, well, unfinished tales uh, from the Middle Earth Legendarium, and he took them, he put them all together and kind of attached his own notes to them so that you would have a little bit of context when he says, you know, hey, I found this excerpt in this filing cabinet, or here's a poem and here's what you need to know about it before you dig in. So there are a lot more notes by him uh, in this book. And it kind of, like I said, helps you peek behind the curtains a little bit. So where the Silmarillion can really transport you, this one can do the same thing for small periods of time, but really it's about you being able to get to know how Tolkien came about writing the way he did and the things that he did. If you like the Silmarillion and you end up enjoying Unfinished Tales as well, then it's time to dig into some of the specific stories that he wrote. So in that case, we've got these three kind of later releases. These all came out in the last 10 years or so. We've got Baron and Luthien, The Children of Hurin, and The Fall of Gondolin. Uh, these are, these look and smell and feel a little bit more like regular novels, but they're not. They are a lot more akin to what you would find in Unfinished Tales with a lot of notes and explanations as to what it is exactly that you're reading in those stories. They just dig in more specifically to those specific stories. And hey, after all that, if you wanna go completely nuts, then go check out the full 12 volume history of Middle Earth, which is basically something like this, kind of on crack. It's the entire Middle Earth legendarium laid out by Christopher Tolkien with his notes of explanation for where he found this or that excerpt or, you know, a poem or prose or whatever. In fact, he even has notes for different versions of the same story. So you can read kind of how things progressed in The Lord of the Rings when Frodo was still called Bingo Baggins, that sort of thing. In my opinion, if you look at these, these are very readable, uh, very easy to sink your teeth into if you are interested in that kind of behind the scenes stuff. The history of Middle Earth, definitely a daunting challenge. If you are Middle Earth obsessed and you want every scrap of information you can find, then you will think it is fascinating. It is wonderful. It's a treasure trove of info. If you're a casual Lord of the Rings reader, then it'll probably prove to be a bit dry for you. Okay, but I call that my stuff by Tolkien pile, right? So we can kind of put this to the side because I want to talk about the stuff about Tolkien. This is another track that you can go down. So if we pull those over, the 
first thing you should do is probably check out a biography about Tolkien, even before we get to the letters. We'll get there in just a second. But I would pick up a biography about Tolkien. The first one I would do is the... <laughs> the first one I would do is the original. This is Humphrey Carpenter's biography. This one was published in... I totally know this off the top of my head. 1977. Okay. So this is a 1977 book that sketches out Tolkien's life based on, you know, obviously the regular sources you would think of, but also interviews with Tolkien himself. And so this is a, a really great source uh, to start with, learning about who Tolkien was. The next one that I would suggest is John Garth's Tolkien and the Great War. This one concentrates much more on the time around World War I. So it's not about Tolkien's entire life necessarily. This one concentrates more on that specific period. It talks about his best friends from boarding school, his experience in the war most especially, and also his first uh, little bit of experience as an academic as well. So this is the one actually, by the way, that the movie, the Tolkien biographical movie from a couple of years ago was based on, uh, but this doesn't take the, uh, shall we say, artistic licenses that the movie does. So this one's much more straightforward, still very readable, still extremely interesting. Next up, I would suggest The Letters. The Letters of J.R.R. Tolkien. This one, again, this is uh, edited by Humphrey Carpenter, the guy who did that first biography I mentioned. The reason why I put this one after the biographies is because it's really helpful to have the uh, context of what was going on in his life if you have in your mind a rough sketch of where he was, what he was doing, you know, when he got married, how many kids he had in this or that year, whatever, it'll help you understand a little bit more where he's coming from in the various letters. But once you get into this one, it is absolutely packed with stuff by Tolkien about Tolkien. So highly recommended. There are just absolute gems in there. Definitely worth checking out. And lastly, once you get to a certain point, you've read all the stuff by Tolkien, you've read a, uh, a few things about Tolkien, then you can get into some of the scholarly work about his own work. So as far as secondary literature goes, I could recommend a million things. I'm going to try to keep it really simple, though, and just recommend the first two things you should read. And I've mentioned these before, so I apologize to anybody who's heard me talk about them. But Tom Shippey's two books, he did one called Author of the Century, and one called The Road to Middle-Earth. Both of these are very easy to read, but packed with a bunch of really, I think, fascinating information about, uh, you know, Shippey's interpretations of passages and characters and whatnot, what they all mean, where they came from, and what Tolkien might have been thinking about when he wrote them. So if that is something that interests you, that is my starting point, is these two Tom Shippey books. Now, there are probably those out there who would be tempted to go down into the comments and critique that by saying, hey, those books are 20, 20 plus years old. And I would say, yeah, no, I get it. I mean, the biography was from 1977, so that one's getting on up there too. But the information is still good. And what we're looking for here is not necessarily the best or the absolute most insightful or groundbreaking things about Tolkien, although these were 20 years ago. The point here is, what should I read next? And this would be the Tom Shippey books, I would say, would be the first step if you want to get into some of that secondary literature about Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings. That's where you start, and then there's plenty of other good stuff to get into. In fact, I would love to hear your suggestions in the comments below. Let me know what you think. So there you have it, the two different paths you can go down, the stuff by Tolkien or the stuff about Tolkien. What is it that you want to read next? Like I said, I would suggest after you're done with The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion, dive into Unfinished Tales, and then you can go into those specific books, The uh, Baron and Luthien, The Children of Hurin, and The Fall of Gondolin. And then when it comes to stuff about Tolkien, well, we just went over that. So you can rewind for three minutes and, and check it out. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful and fun. Go out, read, enjoy yourselves, and let me know what you think. I will eagerly await your next question in the comments below.